when it was time to graduate, we, we ended up getting uh, one-way plane tickets. We had like $500, you know, I mean, we had like our graduation money or something from our grandmas. And um, no job, no place to live, and just, you know, got on a plane and moved here. And, um, and, and kind of did our best to make it work. So that meant lying to landlords about having employment and, you know, whatever you could do to kind of survive. Um, and, and after moving here, at the encouragement of John Waters, um, I saw an ad in a paper for um, a manager needed at, at Landmark Theaters. And I applied for this job. It was the first job I'd ever applied for post-college. Um, I'm still an employee of Landmark Theaters to this oh, really? day. So that was like 13 years ago. Um, I'm on leave of absence, actually, right now because I'm making this movie. But it's just weird because I, I kind of have to kind of re-piece it all together in my own mind, you know? You just never know what these weird little things, what, what the next thing is going to lead to. And that job with Landmark, that first job with Landmark, was at a failing old movie theater that we've since mm -hmm. closed. It was in Belmont. And you'll, you'll see that this plays out in the story of the movie that I'm currently making. Um, that, that movie theater was fabulously haunted and old. It was called the Belmont. It was right near, well, it was in Belmont, but that's a little, do you guys know Belmont? Mm -hmm. A little place near San Mateo. And that was devastating to close the movie theater. I then moved to the Park in the Guild um, over in Menlo Park. Really great old single screen movie theaters. Ended up helping to close the park. Devastated. I ended up resigning from Landmark, and they said, well, we think that you, you know, you have this spirit of showmanship. What would it take to kind of keep you around? And I said, well, I would really, really want a single screen theater in San Francisco so that I'm not commuting. I mean, it was ridiculous. I was like driving down to the peninsula, but I was like living here and paying rent here. So they said, hold on, because they knew the manager at the Bridge Theater was going to be um, taking off. He had already kind of given notice. And, um, I don't know, it was like a month or something, went by and I ended up moving in as manager of the Bridge Theater. And um, the Bridge has kind of been my San Franciscan home base for the past 12 years. Because all that other stuff happened in my first year living in San Francisco. And at the Bridge, um, I really met the most amazing creative collaborators. Just a spirit of um, kind of artistic support I was looking for. And, and hadn't really found. Um, also, while this was all going on, I fell into a, um, a brand new nightclub here in San Francisco called Tranny Shack. Um, it had just started, and because I had done Peaches in um, Pennsylvania, I was also still on the drag kick and wanting to kind of, you know, explore performing as just a hobby, really, just having fun. And Tranny Shack uh, was so exciting. It was the, the place to go and see grown men, you know, give themselves abortions and, you know, um, act out whatever crazy, amazing, radical, gory, artistic thing. And the wonderful thing about it was it wasn't just men, you know, you could be a woman and you could be a drag queen there. There were no rules about drag. It was completely open. It was a free-for-all. It was artists performing for artists. And between um, Tranny Shack and the Bridge Theater, I met people that I'm, like, making this movie with. Um, all these years later. Really, really talented, incredible performers and artists and writers and filmmakers who uh, show up for this art for art's sake, you know. Um, it really was, and it still is, I think, something that's so special about San Francisco is that people here um, kind of will, will do the work for the love of the work and the end result, the project. And um, that kind of energy was really what set the wheels in motion for me to then go to Landmark and pitch Midnight Mass. Um, Midnight Mass is the midnight movie series that I created um, basically in honor of the Coquettes. It was kind of an homage. And in the spirit of the Coquettes, we thought, well, we, we, can, we have a movie theater now, and we do drag. You know, we, it was like we had the Bridge Theater, and we were doing all this stuff at Tranny Shack, so why don't we do something... Um, related to that, and actually, uh, I have to give Martini credit, it was Martini's idea to call it Midnight Mass, and I had already been doing drag as Peaches Christ. Um, so thank you for that, because all these years later, it still works. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things where 
when you, you have an idea like that and you go in to sell it to a corporate executive, um, I can just say that the looks on their faces, when we sat down and I said, I'm going to do a midnight movie series and call it Midnight Mass. I'm going to host it as my drag queen alter ego, which is Christ. <laughs> like, you didn't quite get the response you wanted. It was like, no, you're not, you know. Mid one, midnight movies didn't work in San Francisco. They had left. They were dead. Um, two, you know, it was kind of maybe something that could be seen as offensive. Um, and and there, were, there were maybe ten other reasons that I won't list tonight. But the cool thing was, Landmark, for whatever reason, the guy in charge kind of like, I think, just maybe even to placate me, said, okay, you can have a summer series. You can do eight weeks. And so we did. And we did our first eight weeks. And um, it ended up, uh, I think, making you know, more money than they ever expected it would make. And it got a lot of press. And we did um, pre-shows where we do, you know, mother-daughter mud wrestling before a Joan Crawford movie. And, you know, what, whatever crazy gimmick we could come up with. You know, I was really obsessed with William Castle and, and Herschel Gordon Lewis and, you know, had read about a lot of the gimmicks that they were using when they would release their exploitation films. And um, we would just sort of mimic that stuff and, and create whatever show we could with no money. We had no budget that first year. I was uh, oftentimes in drag, hosting the movie, and then running to the office and counting all the money and making <laughs> the bank deposit and, you know, instructing the staff and, and ending the film, threading the projector in drag, I mean, all that stuff. Um, now I actually have people that help me with those things, but before it was like, we were like a two-queen show, really, back in those <laughs> days. <laughs> um, and Landmark gave us the uh, freedom and the... the permission to go on, I have to check my own timing to see where I am in the story, okay, good, uh, to go on and just keep doing the series, and the series grew and grew and grew, and we, and it was an annual event, and um, along, uh, along uh, those lines, with Tranny Shack and Midnight Mass and being at the bridge, you know, it was kind of like, the more we did and the more uh, fun we were having, that was the big thing, is we weren't really thinking about any sort of career aspirations or anything, it was just fun. We were just having fun. We weren't making any money. We could barely afford to pay our rent. We were practically evicted. But we were having so much fun, it didn't matter. Um, we, we started to think of other things, so we created a cable access show because I wanted to um, get back into editing and maybe uh, making media. And from the cable access show, I thought, you know, I think we should, you know, create, we should do a Halloween event where it's part, part film festival. 